Welcome back guys. In this video, I've got another review and this one is a dash cam. So this particular model is the Van True On Dash N2 Pro. And it is supposed to be a really awesome dash camera. And I have done a dash cam in the back, but that was more of like a rear view mirror built-in dash cam, had a bunch of different things. This one is strictly just a dash cam. So I'm gonna open this up and see what's inside. There's a lot of paperwork in here. There we go. Here's the actual dash cam. And we've got some accessories in here. And now everything is out of the box. So we do have a cable. It looks like this can be used for charging if you have your own power source or if you want to use this to plug into your computer, you can do that. They also have a separate charger. So this plugs into your car, this plugs into the unit, and this thing is super, super long. Look at all that. I don't know why they would make it so long. Maybe if you wanna route this through your car, maybe up through the top, the headliner. Then we have a suction cup. Now, not just a normal suction cup. It's got locking mechanism on there, so you can turn it and you can lock it. And also up here at the top, you can see there are some gold pins. Now, those gold pins are because you can plug it in through here. So at the other side, this little nub over here, you can see there is a USB port and we have the actual unit itself. So you have two cameras. You have one right here in the back with the screen, and then on the other side, you have the other camera. Now both the front and the back can do 1080p, and the front can also do 1440 at 30 frames per second, along with HDR, and both of them are 170 degrees ultra-wide lenses. So this really is the ultimate dash cam. I don't know what else you would need in a dash cam. You've got the screen, you've got both of the cameras, which are wide angles. You've got everything you need in here. There's a USB port here on the end if you wanna plug something directly into this. And the material on here is really, really nice. It's like a soft touch plastic, like you might get in a premium car, how some of their dashboards are soft touch, but still plastic but you can tell it's a very high quality finish. You've got some buttons here up on the top for your navigation through the screen here. And also here on the end where it has the USB port, you can see there, there's also another opening. That's where you can get to your SD card and also you can get to a micro HDMI in case you wanna plug this directly in. Now, another great thing about this is it has a built-in battery. So there's no reason to constantly have it plugged in in case you wanna take it inside and plug it in and get some data off of there in case someone hit your car. But all you have to do is go to the buttons, hold down the power button, and there it is. It'll turn on and it'll give you a notification saying, hey, there's no SD card because I don't have one in currently. And then this is the display that you get. Now by default, it is on 1080 by 1080, so both the front camera and the back camera are at 1080. So you need to go into the settings and change all that stuff around. So next up, I'm gonna go through the settings, the interface, and then I'm going to plug it in my car and see how it does. Okay, so this is the screen that you start out with. Now turning it straight on, you can see up here, it's gonna start recording and the 1080p plus 1080p, the first one is gonna be your front camera, the second one is going to be the back camera, and right next to it, you're gonna have your timer on how long it's been recording. In the upper right-hand corner, you're gonna have it telling you if it's in night mode, and if it's automatic or on or off. And right now it's saying it's on automatic. So once it gets dark, it's actually going to switch. I'm gonna see if I can do it, if it gets dark enough. See how the top one changes to black and white? Below it, you can see that G is G sensor. And below it, HDR saying that HDR is on. 
Below that, the little microphone is saying if it's on or off. Right now it is on. Below that, it'll show your ba battery, what it's currently at. Mine is charging. Of course, it also has the date and going around, the time, and then the SD card symbols here saying that there is an SD card inserted. Above that, that little plus zero, that is your exposure value. So you can change what the exposure is. Then above that, you can have an optional GPS and then parking mode on or off, time lapse, loop recording, etc. You can have different things going on there. So down here, you have your four buttons. So those four buttons can do different things. Obviously the power button is on and off and the mode will take you to the screens, the different mode screens. Left and right, if you press right, it will actually turn the screen off. So if you don't want it on, doesn't you don't want it to see it for some reason, that turns it on and off. And the left will go straight to the microphone. So turning that off or turning it back on for recording. And if we hit OK, it will stop recording and it'll be put in standby mode. OK, so let's jump into the different settings. First, we'll start with record setup. Now you can go use these left and rights to navigate through these and press OK for your selection. So we'll start with resolution. Now resolution is kind of tricky. So dual, they're both at 1080. So you can have 1080 on the inside camera and also 1080 on the outside camera. But if you choose to increase it, it's no longer dual. It'll just be the front camera if you increase the resolution. Next up on the list, we have loop recording. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to loop its recording either every one, three, or five minutes. By default, it is on three. G sensor, that's just how sensitive it's gonna be. If it's hit, it's gonna start the, the saving of the, the recording, whatever loop you have it on. So right now it's on medium sensitivity for any sort of vibrations. Next we have auto recording, either on or off if you want it to automatically record. We've got parking mode, it's currently on off, that's why you didn't see the symbol. Then you can select the camera exposures for the front or the back cameras. Either one, you can select a separate exposure. Number plate, you can choose to put in your license plate for the display if you have to take this to court. Same thing for the stamp. That is the time, the GPS if you have it. All that information that was on the bottom, you can choose to turn that on or off. You can also choose to rotate the display, so if you have it up like this, or if it's upside down in your car or whatever, you can change the display. Time lapse. You can choose to do time lapse if you want to. I don't want to really get into anything like that. This is just a simple one for me. Power off delay is basically how long it takes before it powers off after you take away any sort of power to the system, so like once you turn off your car, how long it will take before it turns off completely and stops recording. Next up we have system setup, so let's get into here. You can change your language. Format, that is for formatting the SD card. They do recommend that you format it and format it often, so it prolongs the life, I guess. You can do the time and date. Mine is off right now, so I do need to change the time and date. The auto LCD off, this is how long it takes before the screen turns off after you not pressing any buttons. Device sound, that is the little beeps that you're hearing. You can turn that on and off. Non-use auto power off. Now this is supposed to be um, a default setting for three minutes and that means that the camera is on but not in use and it will auto turn off after that three minutes or you can choose between one, two, and three minutes. The flicker frequency, it's basically 50 hertz or 60 hertz. There's not a whole lot to choose from there. System info, you can just go in and look at the information or you can go back to default settings. Now I do not have the GPS external 
part, you have to buy that separately. So that's where you go in and you set up your GPS. Um, back on the front, it'll have a GPS on and off. It'll basically say where you are, just in case you do get hit, it can say where you got hit or where the incident occurred at. And then we also have files. Files is going to be everything that you have for your recordings. So you can sort them through events, normals, photos, or just go hit all, and it will have all of the recordings that it has done. So right there, I have a recording, and you can go through them. I have a few different recordings just playing around with this so far. But in here, you can go through, and if you want to delete them, you can, or you can play them through this if you want to. So a little bit more info after looking more into the ones I really didn't know a whole lot about. So time-lapse, if you want to go into time-lapse, and basically what this means is it's gonna take static photos either every one, five, 10, 30, or 60 seconds to create a video montage. So if you want that, it is basically an eco mode. So it'll just take pictures every so often and another one is parking mode. Now parking mode is actually pretty cool. So if we go and turn it on, now that it is turned on, basically what this does is it will notice if no, if there's, it's, it's a motion sensor. So if nothing comes by the front of the camera, because when you're driving, things are gonna constantly be moving. So it notices when you're parked, if after five minutes, nothing is going across the screen, what it's gonna do is it's going to start recording once something does actually pass by. So if your car is parked and then someone comes by and hits your car or something, it's gonna start recording even if there's no G sensor action going on. If someone goes by your car or something happens, it will start recording because you're parked and you're obviously not there to do anything to take a snapshot or to record if your car's off. So it will automatically do that. And it's gonna stop recording after 10 seconds of inactivity. So if a bird goes by your car, it'll record it. And then after 10 seconds of the bird being gone, it'll stop recording. So it's not gonna clog up all of your SD card. So now that I have parking mode, you can see there's the little P right there. And there's also a P over here. So if you want to activate it that way, all you have to do is press and hold this. And there it goes. The P will come on and off. So you can manually or automatically I guess you can do it this way or you can go into the settings. I think this one is gonna be a lot easier. Okay, so we are recording with the inside camera. This is the one facing inside the cab of your car. This is gonna be at 1080. So this is my little studio area, so it's very well lit. Probably gonna be a lot sunnier. So this is just standard zero exposure at 1080. And now this is going to be your outside camera. So this is facing outside of your car. Again, this is gonna be at 1080, and this is what it's going to look like. Again, the exposure is at zero, so this is just the standard setup. Okay, now it's been bumped up to 1080, 60 frames per second, as compared to the last one, which is 30 frames a second. So you might be able to see a little bit of a difference in the frames but this is also gonna eat up a lot of your SD card. So remember that if you want to put better quality, you're gonna have to get a bigger SD card. And last but not least, this is the 1440 at 30 frames per second. This is the highest resolution that you can get. And it only goes up to 30 frames per second, but really you don't need a whole lot more. You don't really need 4K video or, I mean, even 1440 is pretty high for a dash cam. But still, this is the best that you can get at 30 frames per second. Okay, this is night mode. Now, I do have my curtains slightly open, but this camera does a very good job at lighting up a room or the inside of the car, because this is the IR on the inside. Look at that. Look how much that lights up. 
and it's completely dark. But the night vision, like, I'm looking at the camera right now because I physically can't see, like, any of this stuff because it's so dark. The sun does not come through those windows. Those are just very, very dim light. So, yeah, I'll even go to my bathroom and do pitch black. So absolutely zero light. So the front camera, I guess you can pick up a tiny bit, but that's probably from the camera. That's the mirror in front of me. So yeah, you can't pick up anything except for the IR that is on the inside of the car. Okay, so here I am inside the car. And the reason why this cord is so ridiculously long is even in the instructions it says you can route it back here behind your glove compartment, through your paneling, up through here, underneath here, and then to, you know, back behind here, or wherever you put the actual dash cam. It's got more than enough room to actually be routed and to be, you know, hiding this long, long wire instead of just having a dangling wire like this. So, Another cool thing that I figured out is on here on the actual charger, it has a little arrow, and if you pull it that way, you've got a USB port. So you're not completely plugging up one of your cigarette lighters or whatever you use it for. So you can actually plug something in there, so it's not totally useless. Okay, so I'm going to put this right here and no this is not where it's actually going to go i just want to do this so you guys can see so up here you've got this big old knob this is also where it plugs in so it can um, charge this without a wire actually going straight into it so i've got this to the side and you can see up here right up there it has a lock so right now it is actually unlocked so you're going to push it up it actually holds in place very nice just like this and then you're gonna turn this, ugh, and then you are suctioned in. This thing this is a very, very good suction cup. I can't even wiggle that around. Very, very good suction cup. I, I really like that, that's awesome. So now that that is there, you've got this little wheel here. Loosen it up, change whatever direction that you want it to be placed in. Um, so let's turn this on and once we turn this on we can see exactly what it's recording the cool thing is it's wide angle so you can you can get a lot to begin with so we're gonna go in here want to get a little bit of the hood of my car and then right about there so then I'm gonna tighten this up so it doesn't wiggle around or anything There we go. So now that is all set up. Let's turn that off. I don't want to kill the battery because it's almost dead. Same thing with my camera. But now we'll get the plug and it's actually going to go in this side up here. Just kind of a pain. There it goes. So that's kind of a pain that it's on this side, but I mean, regardless, if you have it behind your rear view, it's where it's probably gonna go. It's gonna be hidden regardless, especially once you tuck it up underneath the headliner. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It is plugged in and it did not turn on automatically unless you have a car that does that, which is really stupid. So, turn the car on to accessory. Found out about your acapella group and there it goes. It's gonna turn on automatically and depending on what setting you have right now, it is automatically recording and it'll do a loop recording based on what you have your settings based on the first part of the video. So I think this is an amazing dash cam. I haven't had any other dash cam that's this awesome. So tell me what you guys think down below. If you want this, like all my videos, down the description, I'll put a link so you can take a look at it or if you wanna buy it, you can. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you
you watch that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here. Yeah, watch this stuff. It's awesome. And if you've watched that and that and subscribed,